Hello, my name's Professor Phil Cleaver, and I'm going to give a talk now for a little while on Chinese and English experimental typography. I'm hoping everyone can see the screen now. Giving lectures to yourself seems to be quite a, a thing which has gone on for two years. Um, this is just to say hello. It's actually the um, symbol for the type archive in London. Um, it's an animal. Um, elephant called Hannibal. Um, so hello. I do two two things mainly. I run a design company called uh, et al. Uh, five days a week and two days a week. I uh, work as a professor for Middlesex University. Yes, it does mean I don't get a lot of time off. Um, I teach uh, at Middlesex uh, on MA and BA. Uh, this is just to say who I am. Um, I was trained by Alan Fletcher at Pentagram. I worked with Bob Gill in New York. I worked in uh, Tay Day in Holland for Vim Crow. Uh, and in the 80s, I was at Wolf Olin's uh, with Michael Wolf. And then in the late, well, middle 80s, I started uh, as creative director of Allied International Designers. So I do three things for a living. I'm a designer, an artist, and an author. And I bring all of these to what I do. So as a designer, uh, this is probably what I'm best known for, having drawn the V, I, and the A of Visa. Vivian Thomas drew the S because I'm crap at curves, but I'm getting better. And this was at the conference in 2019 in uh, Hangzhou in China. Um, we changed all the corporate colours and we increased the visibility of the word Visa and made it a, a strong word mark. When I go to different countries I get written up in uh, local design mags and this one's in uh, in Hong Kong China for um conference I was talking at and it's my favorite interview because I haven't got a clue what it says I've designed about 140 brands the other thing I do is art I take things like this which is the uh Roman Catholic Bible I fold fold the pages up no book is harmed or cut during this process I just fold the pages and then I've used a 1954 uh, tin, uh, noddy book to collage the back end balls and it's got big ears on the top. Uh, the other thing as an author, what I became the first book and what I became in, became internationally successful was what they didn't teach you in design school. And in China, it became quite uh, successful. This is me when I left art school. So it's uh, all downhill as you get older. Um, but we used to do everything by drawing, and this was a drawing of a poster for the um, National Portrait Gallery, and it's all Marina script. So this, the only way you could show a client what you wanted to do typographically was to draw it, and this just shows the detail. The drawing was then marked up and sent to compositors who would have typeset it and put it in position and printed it. I've always liked playing and using typography in, in a slightly experimental way. Uh, I love to quote on the left, what men dare, and down the bottom he says, I dare. Um, and then one on the right-hand page, because it's quite small, says, restraint and limitation reveal the master. I've always liked playing with letterpress and putting it at angles and doing things with, with it you're not meant to do. When you're looking at typography, and especially in two languages, what people forget is, especially with a computer, is if you start drawing on bits of paper, type what you're trying to do. So this is a bit of range left type and a bit of range right type, and how you can put those two together. Looking at it on sketches, looking at it on bits of what I call designer shorthand, you can work out the balance and you can see what balances and doesn't balance. So if you draw any typographic layout, in this way, you can see what's going on and what will work and what won't work. Whereas on a computer, it gets a lot more complicated. And also you start trying to read things. And the primary thing is to work on getting getting it to work. Ah, there we go. So this was a book um, for Adao Yang, who's a, a fashion stylist in Hong Kong, China. And she wanted to, she wanted the book to look and reflect Chinese um, and it's a concertina book. Uh, so I actually hung the English text in a traditional Chinese way, but it's English text. So the pictures and the text do not relate and they're not meant to relate. 
So you can look at the pictures as you go through the book and you have to turn the book around to read it. But this just shows some of the spread. So I think it has a, that reflection of uh, early Chinese typography hanging. Um, so this just shows another one of the spreads. And the other thing I want to now talk about is what they didn't teach you in design school, because this got translated into a number of languages. My assistant came in to the studio and when he worked out, I'd actually done Anthony uh, in the book, which is a, is a side view for Anthony Froshark. He said, Phil, sure, you're typesetting in Russian. What? But you can't read Russian. And I said, no, I know I can't read Russian. I'm not that good on English. But looking at the shape, the size and the weight of type, if you're not worried about what the language is, it's the same way as I see English. So I see it as all as abstract shapes. And you can get what I call the colour, which is the actual blackness of the type on the page correct. You can get the balance correct. So it doesn't really matter what the language is. Once you've got the design worked out, you can actually get it to work quite easily. And that just shows what it looked like when it was printed. Then I had the, the challenge of doing it in Chinese. Um, although the Chinese title is not a direct translation of the English one. Um, and what's here, I was helped by um, Angel Wong, uh, because obviously my knowledge of reading Chinese is not good. But here you can see how to get the balance and the weight and the type still all works, although it's in a language I can't read. So I took the main part of the illustrations in the book. Uh, they're all based on puns on typeface and making faces. And they were the emphasis of the main words in each chapter. So this one's on the on your um, resume or your CV. So I use the Chinese to make a nose. nose. Um, just showing another page from the book. I mean, things like this. So the word in follow in Chinese becomes the uh, eyeballs. Uh, verbal becomes a little goatee. Batch made the face smile more. Metal becomes the teardrops under the eyes. Else is being spoken. Form becomes the eyebrow. The R gives you one eyebrow on the, on the right, and the Chinese now is used to make another eyebrow. I did that as a, uh, as a fold-out concertina, which I use when I'm giving talks as giveaways. And if you buy the book and you don't like it, it looks very good folded up. It's actually brilliant. So this is the branding for the conference uh, for 21. And it's just looking at how the English and the Chinese work together. It, it's once you stop being worried about not understanding and look at it from a design point of view, you can have some fun playing with the, diff well, the effect it has. And here, this is from the Malaysian bank where we're looking at designing a unique font to go with this based on their symbol. So we, the, the angle of the triangle became the starting point. This obviously, because it's a Malaysian bank, has to work in Chinese as well as in uh, English. And we cut five fonts for them. This is a book on my folded books. And here it's just typographically using... Um, the Chinese and English to work with each other. And that little motif in the middle of a little boy blindfolded going through life exceptionally fast is what I relate to as my motif. It's actually a pencil sharpener. And the cat, this book actually uses both Chinese and English in an interesting way, I think. The quote is from Sir Peter Blake, and it says, art is the last refuge of magic. So the, the dedication... Uh, is written in Cockney rhyming slang. So trouble and strife means wife and bricks and mortar means daughter. So here the, the English is reading left to right and the Chinese hangs. In, in Malaysia, the Chinese reads right to left, but in mainland China, it leads, reads left to right. So this is reading for mainland China. And it creates quite very interesting typographic um, layouts. And the text from that brochure was actually used as a, uh, on the wall of an exhibition to explain the books. 
from what was going on. The other thing I do is I look at working with hot metal and wood type. Uh, this was for a book called Love, um, and the Chinese text is my Chinese name, Gao Ying Fei, printer. What I love about hot metal is you can't control the spacing. It's not like a computer. The, it, you're dealing with three-dimensional bits of metal, and how you put them together and how close they get is all controlled by the actual system. But what's fascinating about going free fall and punk with uh, typography in a comp room, a composing room, is things like this, where you'd never normally think of putting black uh, black letter, old English quote marks around Gil Sand. And that just shows the title page. And that's what it looks like when it's in metal. Each um, book, there's only 50 books made, but each book has a frontispiece, which is the left-hand side, which is unique to that book. So I quite like the randomness of how you print on this um, paper. It's paper which you um, you burn uh, at altars to, um, so to, to uh, give, um, give your grandparents money, but I use it for printing. And I love the fact that when you lay it on the chase at different angles and print, you get lots of different effects. And each one of these formed the frontispiece. But like most things in life, I get carried away. Um, so I've managed to do a few of these. And I just love experimenting and seeing which way type works, uh, angles, etc. cetera. Um, this is the latest typographical experiment. But again, it's not is seeing things as abstract art, not looking at them to read. If you really want to study typography, look at look at it in a language you can't read, and then you actually see the abstract art and the balance. This is a series of uh, T-shirts I did for Adele. And love. if you don't love yourself, no one else is going to love you. You have to go to people with what you are. And she said, I wanted to actually do some more T-shirts on the word love. So... Having finished that book, I used sent these over to to her, and they became the t-shirts and sweatshirts in Hong Kong, China. This was for uh, Adrian Bradshaw, who spent twenty seven years living in uh, China, um, and it's this is a metal badge on sunk into the book cover that shows a detail of a slip case. And how the uh, book opens out, it's um, what I call Swiss bound. The reason for that is when the books, the pages go open, the uh, double page spreads uh, go completely flat. And this just shows, ooh, this just shows how the Chinese follows on from the English. So although it's quite a classical block of in what looks like English text, the Chinese and English work side by side or one above the other. And it had, it's how, how because if you're English, you're only going to read English. And if you're Chinese, you read the Chinese. So the fact they run on doesn't affect the reading of either language. And it gives it, I think, works as a very interesting typographical um, rendition of that. And also it blends the two together. This is all, this page is actually about the techniques and what cameras are used, which when he was at what I call the cold face, which is the picture on the left. And this just shows a chapter opening. So the, the type of typography and the measure for the type all works back from the size of the photographs. And that's the detail of it on the limited edition prints. When we do books, we end up doing exhibitions. So we have to do posters for the exhibitions. These are the launch um, in Oxford books. This is for, for, for an exhibition at an art gallery in Shanghai. And here, the Chinese is the prominent language. So because it's a Chinese exhibition in China, I mean, English actually hangs down like uh, traditional Chinese, but you have to turn the book around to actually read it in English. It's still, it still reads perfectly in both languages, but it creates some fascinating visual look to typography. And I think I'm probably one of the first people or the first person to ever do typography like this in English and Chinese. And I think the mix of the two languages, but the Chinese being the predominant one in this case, and English being the secondary. A 
as another one of the spreads. So again, drawing this on, with a pencil and paper before you actually do it, you work out the balance, how to hang it, what the hang lines are, and how the thing will work together. So that's the end. So don't worry, I have finished. Just want to leave you three things. Be true unto yourself and always say please and thank you. Thank you.